Today, I am joined by James Cromwell, actor, activist, producer, whose new film Mondo Hollywoodland follows a politically confused mushrooms dealer who traverses through Hollywood available now on Amazon Prime Video. Uh, James, so great to have you on. I really appreciate it. Thank you. So uh, talk to us a little bit about this this film, which you produced. Um, what 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 was the genesis of the idea here? Uh, the genesis of the idea was that uh, maybe it made him uh, easier for him to sell the film. <laughs> so I love the good. honesty. I love it, <laughs> which matters a lot, which matter. It's not a small issue. No, it is not. Not if you want your film to be seen. Um, can you talk a little bit about the 60s era Mondo films that that this movie is sort of an, an homage to? Um, and and sort of what you see is interesting about the the genre. Well, I, I think uh, if I if I have my genres right, it's a new Velvag, um, it's a Godard and Chabrol and Varda and Truffaut, uh, the new wave they called it. Uh, I think of this film sort of as the Bout de Souffle, which is Godard's film only in color. Um, there were um, there are stories that Godard actually knew that what he was doing was bad, but that was the whole point. Um, so he was trying to look at the language of film uh, and develop a new syntax, a new way of making films, sort of the way Bertolt Brecht does with what he's called Verfremdung's effect, which mm -hmm. is to distance an audience to keep them aware that it is filmic, that it is a film, it is a fiction, it is a narrative. It relates to something that is up for the audience to create for themselves. In in hearing you talk in in this way about films, I'm sort of I'm realizing, and I wonder if you agree, that this type of analysis of film has become sorely lacking, sort of in popular culture in the United States at this point in time. Uh, do you do you agree with that? I mean, it's it seems to me that the richness of the discussion of film um, in this style is not what it once was in, in popular society. Certainly in America. Yeah, because in America, film is considered a product. A studio has a certain pro a studio works is owned by a corporation. That corporation has obligations to its shareholder to produce a profit. They produce a, this thing called a film cinema. They show the cinema and they try to reach as broad an audience as possible. So they either play down to that audience or through the media that they also control, they create reviews that make the thing seem as vacuous as possible. Right. So as not to offend anybody before they, they're sitting in the seats watching it. So there's two layers. In other words, the film is created in a certain way. But the discussion of that film and its promotion could still be more substantive. But even that, in order to make the film appealing, is is kept relatively superficial. So you really have two layers of this that you're fighting against. Yeah. If you think of a film like Joker and you think, well, are they going to take are they going to take that film seriously? Uh, you know, some people, um, which I'm really glad were offended by that film. But there's a lot to unpack in that film. There's a lot of discussions about who we are, where we are, what we're doing. Are we insane? Um, uh, who runs the show? Uh, what can we do as individuals to oppose it? Uh, what is the cost of living in a dysfunctional society when your entire mental structure is uh, is cobbed together from falsehood? Mm. I remember uh, watching an interview where Charlie Rose interviewed uh, the late David Foster Wallace. And they were just chatting about different things. And Charlie Rose asks uh, David Foster Wallace his opinion about the English patient. And after sort of in that that David Foster Wallace sense of saying, you really care what I think about the English patient? Is that real? Do you re are you really asking me that? He says, I think it's a beautifully filmed commercial Hollywood endeavor. That was sort of like his top line analysis that fundamentally it's still it, it looks nice, but it's a profit driven Hollywood endeavor is is your top line analysis of a film similar where first you're you're looking at what what was the point of the production here? Was it an independent project? Was it a profit driven project, Hollywood, et cetera? 
Uh, that that enters into my thinking. Um, also, the way that certain um, what would I call them? Um, not metaphors, but when they use contemporary situations, circumstances, events that really happened or real people exploitatively without examining what they're doing. They just use it because it, it gives a patina of reality, of, of pertinence. Um, uh, and uh, I think it's a, a great mistake. People do that with the, with the Holocaust. They do that with the, uh, the Nazis. They do that in, in a variety of ways. The politics are always, what it comes down to is it's basically a boy meets girl, boy loses girl, boy gets girl. Hmm. But so a film like Syriana, which has many, 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 many layers, yeah, and is very provocative if you think about it, gets short shrift because they know the powers that be is that an audience is not going to be able to analyze that film from a, an, an understanding of the what the reality is. So they'll miss half the film and say, "What was that all for? I don't understand. I like George Clooney. He's so funny. Why can't he do?" And you think, wow, that's uh, that's a waste. It's so interesting that 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 you mentioned that movie, because that's one that I've thought about in this context, where when you look at the analysis and the discussion of it, it it's it's talking about 20 or 30 percent of the film. And and like you're pointing out, there's so much substance there that seems to be above the radar in, in a sense or below. I don't know. Yeah, I agree. Um, when it comes to you mentioned uh, the Holocaust, for example, as as one uh, uh, topic sometimes that's touched in certain ways and not others. I just finished up reading the book Technopoly by the critic Neil Postman, where he talks about in the education context in the United States. And this book was written in 1992, but still relevant. There's often agreement about what are valuable topics in school. And the Holocaust is one that is considered. We teach about the Holocaust. We teach about slavery, etc. Similarly, in, in literature, there are often books or authors where there's a, a sort of consensus like it's important that students read this. But less commonly, is there really thought given to what is it that we want people to learn and then how should they use this in their lives going forward? Like, what's the point? What do we want people to take away from learning about the Holocaust or whatever the case may be? Is that uh, uh, applicable to film as well when some of these events or ideas are used just to make a move a movie? Excuse me. Uh, yes, I think I think it is. Um, um, I did a film uh, uh, called the uh, Panama Papers. I think mm -hmm. it was called the Panama Papers. And uh, it was interesting because the Panama Panama pa Papers revelations it seemed to exclude every American. There was no American mentioned. Mm. And there's no real connection to an, uh, there was a, uh, an event in America, but it was the, the uh, it wasn't central to what the story was about, which was how this uh, catastrophe uh, occurred. And I know I'm noticing the same things in this new revelation, the Pandora Papers, that it's all about Kenyatta of, of Kenya and somebody in Czechoslovakia and, and all these people. And they say, and celebrities. And I don't know what the that consortium of uh, independent journalists thought was happening with people who have a great deal of money because that's what they do. They make very clear that there's no um, there's no criminality involved. But at the same time, they don't show you the whole story, which is two of our states, Delaware and and um, uh, South Dakota are are probably two of the biggest offshore um, deposits of um, people's money uh, that there are. Yeah. So so in other words, in, in almost any time, you, film is a very simple medium. You, if you overlay it with a lot of fact, if there's a lot of levels to understanding, it's very hard to keep an audience because an audience is only interested not only in the narrative. But seeing themselves in the character so that they can experience the thing that the things that the character does, and they play this sort of game isolated by themselves. Whereas you get a film like The Battle of Algiers, which I saw back in the 60s in a movie house in New York, and uh, there were Black Panthers uh, in the front row, right, right in front of me. 
And of course, they understood every nuance of that film because they'd seen it in their community. But I, a nice white boy sitting behind him, I'm looking at this film, it's revelatory, but I know nothing about how the police, how the state operates in a ghetto to suppress the aspirations of the people. Right. Um, a couple of uh, things I wanted to ask about maybe related to this. You've been arrested several times doing activism. It's typically like trespassing, basic civil disobedience. D does that have any long term impact in any kind of legal sense? Do those arrests matter because they're not they don't rise to the level, interestingly enough, of where you start falling subject to like a three strikes and you're out sort of thing? Does, does it have any impact at all on you? Well, actually, it does in Texas. Ah. <laughs> Um, the one I have in Texas, I'm still on probation. Wow. <laughs> uh, really means that I cannot I get arrested in any state for breaking any law. Um, uh, and you know, it, if I had a larger, um, uh, a career, I suppose that I would be like, uh, uh, some wonderful people in Hollywood who actually do do really great work. Mm. I'm not sure that Sean Penn uh, gets the opportunities to do the work now that he did before because of the work that he did in Haiti and the enemies that he made in Haiti, uh, namely the Clinton Foundation and um, and the United Nations and what he saw and how he reacted to it and how, how he spoke about it. So I, I don't know um, my activism, I don't think raises to that rises to that level, but people do notice uh, and um, it is a valid tech. It, it is a technique of civil disobedience, uh, breaking the law in order to bring attention to the law, uh, to to crimes that are being being committed inside of the law. Um, and uh, there would there be ramifications to my career? There may be, but I I can't stop it. I have to continue doing what I'm doing. No doubt, no, no doubt. doubt. Um, you um, were a Bernie supporter. Are you what's your yeah. sense so far of Joe Biden's uh, presidency? <laughs> How many Haitians has he sent back? How what's he doing at the border? Mm -hmm. What's he what? I, listen, this was the same with Obama. Obama had both ho both houses of Congress. He had the presidency. He did absolutely squat. Mm. I don't think much changes between that administration and what it managed to accomplish to, since it until it got into the sort of stalemate that's going to exist in 2022 when the Republicans take back the House, we're going to be in the same bloody position. It, the change, as, as um, Toonberry says and other young vi and, uh, environmentalists say, it's not going to come from the blah, blah, blah of politicians. It's going to come from the street. It's going to come from the demands of people. And... Uh, I think uh, I think that will happen. So you don't think too highly so far of what of what Joe Biden has done. Clearly, do you do you distinguish no. between is there a consequence to the fact that it's Joe Biden and not another four years of Trump? It's not another four years of Trump, but it, we all in the 60s, we also say, yeah, but it, it's so much it's so much like it under the surface I mean, when you watch the policies. What's happening around the world? What, when are we going to start? We're, it looks like we're trying to start a war with China, but what's going to happen around the world to this war state that we have created to satisfy the needs of the military industrial complex? We need those wars. We need those bases. I just watched a film on the F-35. The F-35, the development of the F-35 is going to cost one, over one trillion dollars, between one and one point seven trillion dollars, they're they're being sold at one hundred and eighty million dollars a piece. What what are we doing as we head towards the precipice of environmental destruction? What are we doing, supporting this industry, those industries, and the extraction industries? So he's opened. He just opened up a whole new drilling thing off the coast. Of, off the West Coast after they had that oil spill caused by a ship dragging its anchor and puncturing a pipe. Yeah. There's no way to have this system. And I, by that, this system, I mean capitalism mm. and have a democratic solution to the problems that all the problems that ail us. 
the environment, racism, sexism, the, uh, across the lot. Nothing is going to change as long as people put profit ahead of people. Do you see the systems in places like Denmark, Norway and Sweden as sufficiently different or is that not enough? No, it, I think it's sufficiently different. It's not a no, it's not enough. It needs to be examined. However, if we had the system of the Scandinavian countries, we could at least have a dialogue about what's happening in this country. Right. What's happening to the people who feel so disaffected that they attack the Congress of the United States violently to achieve what? They their lives were not appreciably made better by that man's uh, presidency. No. So what what are they thinking? Are they thinking or are they being led by an Australian named Murdoch to not be able to distinguish the truth from falsehood when it's right in their faces and it's them? Yeah, he's the, he's the worst. He's up there for sure. He is up there for sure. Yeah. We've been speaking with actor and activist James Cromwell. The new film is Mondo Hollywoodland. James, I so appreciate being able to speak with you. The film is now available on Amazon Prime Video and we're linking to it. Uh, re really a pleasure speaking with you today. Likewise. Enjoy the film. It's really a wonderful film. See it.